In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use EQ in GarageBand on the iPad or the iPhone to help clean up your tracks and make your song sound better. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my job is to help you create, record and release your best music and EQ or equalization is one of the really cool tools that we have in our GarageBand toolkit that can help us do just that. So let's stop talking, let's jump into GarageBand and take a look. Oh, and stick around to the end because I've got a bonus tip about how you can get a free five band EQ plugin that has Q controls. Find out what all that means at the end of the video. This is a song that I'm working on here in GarageBand at the moment. It's called Wasting Time, and at the moment it sounds a bit like this. So it's sounding okay. I've done some of the reverb, some of the delay, some of the effects, and some of the mixing of the volume, but there's something sticking out to me, and it's this guitar sound here. So if we just solo this one, let's play this. There's just some of those higher or mid to high frequencies that I'm not liking in this guitar. So I thought this was a good example to show you how we can use the EQ to smooth out some of this and to improve this sound. So to go to EQ, we're gonna tap on the mixer icon up here. Now, if you're on the iPhone, it'll be under your settings. You have to go to the down arrow and go to track settings, but you come in here to plugins and EQ, and here we have the visual EQ. So it'll be on by default. All we need to do is turn the light on there and then tap on the little icon next to it. And here we are in our visual EQ ready to make our EQ moves. A quick refresher on EQ if you're new to the world of equalization. So in the visual EQ here, we have these three dots and what these represent is different frequencies. We can slide them to the left and the right. So here's our base frequency and we can select one of our low frequencies here to either boost or cut. We have our mids here and we can again select a mid frequency to either increase or decrease the volume of and our treble where we can increase or decrease by making what we call a boost or a cut. Now an EQ is really nothing more than a volume dial but at a particular frequency. So if you consider this like three separate volume dials, if you want the bass to go high, the mids to go low and the trebles to go high, that's what you would do there. So what do we actually want to do with this particular track though? Let's jump in and take a look at that now. So we've still got the guitar soloed here. So let's hit play and take a quick listen. So what it is, it's in that sort of mid range. Now, when we're talking guitars, we're looking at something sort of around the mid range here that I think is what's sticking out to me. So the best way that I use, and it's not my method, it's a lot of folks use this, is to actually boost up first. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweep side to side until we can find the frequency. And by boosting it, it's really gonna make it present and be able to hear the frequency that we may want to actually reduce. So let's boost this up here by about uh, you know seven or eight dB, and then we'll play and we'll sweep across and see if we can find what we want to actually cut out. Yeah, so it's everything sort of around that, what between one and two K, that's kind of what we want to actually get rid of. So what we're going to do now is we're going to play it back and we'll actually reduce that and we'll see if we can improve this sound by cutting those frequencies that we don't want. So that's about where I think it is. So what I've done is I've dropped it about 1.8K, so 1,800 kilohertz, uh, or 1,800 hertz, and I've actually dropped that down a little bit there. So you can see it's only down about 5 dB, but it's already making a bit of a difference. If we make a really drastic cut, then it's gonna remove those frequencies. And because it's an EQ curve, it's actually gonna impact the frequencies to the left and the right. Now with the visual EQ, we don't actually have what we call a Q setting, which is how wide or narrow this EQ cut or boost is gonna be. However, there is an option and an alternative, which I'll show you at the end of this video. So hang around for that one as well. 
Another option that we have here in the Visual EQ is to actually turn on the analyzer, which gives us a visualization of the frequency. So to do that, we tap here in the bottom left and turn the analyzer on. And now what you're going to see is it's actually going to show up the waveform. Now, why didn't I turn this on to start with? Well, I'm an advocate of mixing with your ears, not with your eyes whenever possible. So if you just go in and look at the waveform and you're like, oh, there's those frequencies I want. And then you just start cutting and boosting from that. You're using your eyes first instead of your ears. So I recommend leaving it off doing some moves first, and then you can turn it on and see what actually happened and if you're on the right track. So let's do that now. We've made our cut here. Let's hit play and see what the visualiza visualization is showing us here with the analyzer. And what you're actually noticing there, and this might surprise you if you're, you're new to EQ, is that the actual notes on the guitar are actually way down here. Like if you look at the notes, they, they don't go up to even to one kilohertz. And that's because the notes on a guitar, the fundamentals, and we won't go into the whole lot of the details of that, but basically every note has a fundamental frequency, which is its original frequency, and then it has harmonic frequencies above that. So the thing that we were actually cutting out, and this is why using your ears, not your eyes is important, is that the harsh frequency you want to remove may not not be what you can really clearly see. It may be very sort of subtle and faint. And if you're just looking at it, you might not detect where it is. You might start cutting down here. And if we did that, We might be cutting out the frequencies that are not the ones that we actually want to get rid of. We're cutting out some of those fundamental frequencies, which are not actually causing the problem. So that's something to keep in mind when you're cutting or boosting is that you can turn that analyzer on, but be careful, use it with caution and make sure that you're listening as well as watching. So what are some other common moves here with the Visual EQ? Well, you notice that we have our bass here and what you often do is with some of your instruments, you may sort of roll off the bass or what we call a low cut or a high shelf. And this is where we're actually reducing the low end down. So let's play back this guitar. We'll come back a bit and play this back. And I'll just show you what happens when we reduce down the bass here. doesn't sound much different, right? So why would you do this? Well, what you do, the reason you do this is let's say I'm recording that acoustic guitar and a truck goes past, or in my case, a bus, because I have a lot of buses here. Well, they are going to be sitting down here in this sort of zero to a uh, hundred Hertz range. And most of your actual audible sounds are not going to be down there, especially on an acoustic guitar where I'm playing a finger style on the higher strings. So there's actually not really any harm in doing this. You don't want to do it on every instrument. You definitely don't want to do it on things like a kick drum or a bass guitar because you're going to lose some of those fundamental frequencies. But for something like this, then I would probably roll off that bottom end just so that I'm not going to have that fear of if I whack something or if there's a low rumble or something in, in the recording, it's not going to come through. And it also means it's not competing for that space with things that are actually using those bass frequencies. And what about the top end here for our EQ? Well, these are what some people call the air frequencies or adding a little bit of shininess or sheen. There's a lot of terms that people use for this. But the reason that they say that is that none of the actual audible frequencies are up here. So if you're coming up here around 10K, you're not actually hearing that. It is impacting the sound because it's impacting the, sort of the harmonics and those higher parts of it. But this is where people say you can hear the air in it. And I'll give you a bit of an example here. So let's play back this. And what I'll do is I'll really boost up, exaggerate, this really high frequency and you'll see what happens when you give a high boost here. So you can hear it's not really changing the actual guitar. In fact, let's come back to the, the arpeggiated parts and, and show it here. So if anything else, it's just sort of adding some shininess to it for want of a better word. You can use whatever word you like. So you may want to actually do a boost there. You may actually want to cut some of that out. You may find that it's actually too harsh and it's competing with some. So let's say I had some woodwind in here and I wanted that airiness in my woodwind. Well, then maybe I would cut this out here and get a sound like this. 
So there's a heap of options here and you can play with it and you can experiment. But again, keep in mind, use your ears as opposed to your eyes wherever possible, because if it sounds good, it is good. And the other thing I'm going to say, and I've broken this rule because I wanted to explain it to you and show this here, but EQing in isolation is okay if you're just pulling out bits of frequencies, but make sure that you then unsolo and put it back in your mix and then come back into your EQ and make sure that the moves you make are actually working with the rest of the track. So let's do that now. Then why are you loud? Don't take all of my time. I don't have much left for you. And what you can hear there, you can hear the bass coming through. In fact, the bass needs to go down a little bit there. But the guitar is now not competing as much. If we come in here, let's do a quick A-B test. So let's just come back to our arpeggiated section back here. Uh, where we've got some vocals as well, and we'll play it, and I'll bring the EQ in and just see if you can hear the difference. The sound of your voice, the feeling I've been here. So for me, and, and I need to adjust this, I've probably done a little bit too much in the cuts, but to me it's just, it's it's uh, sitting better in the mix. It's not sticking out and poking out, and that's, that's what I look for in a mix in a song like this, is I want all the instruments to work together as one harmonious sound. I don't want one instrument to just be poking out in the mix. So there you go. That is how we can actually use this. Now, there's a couple more things I want to show you here. One is that the visual EQ is cool for EQing, but it's also great for volume. And if you look over here to the right, you'll notice that we have a volume slider here and I actually have this set just below zero because what I've actually done here I've gone in and done my automation I've done my volume and then I was like oh, the guitar's just slightly too loud so if you're finding that one track is slightly too loud or slightly too quiet come in here to your visual EQ and then you can actually just turn the whole lot up or down so let's just show you how that works I've been here before if silence is gone so it's just a great way to balance out those sounds when you're doing your final mixing, as opposed to going back and playing with automation and doing all the other things that you may need to do. And I've got a, another video that shows you exactly how to use that EQ volume control. All right, bonus EQ tip time. If you want more control over your EQ, and I know you do, then you can use a third-party plugin. And in this case, I'm using the free LRC5 EQ plugin. I've covered this before. There'll be a complete video up the top there and at the end of this one if you want to learn more. But what we can do is we can come in here to edit, and you'll notice here that I've added in the LRC5, which is an AUV3, a third-party plugin. You just go to the App Store, you download it, and you can use it. So let's turn this one on and Tap on the logo here to go in. And here you can see what I've done is a more complex version of what we just did because the great thing here about LRC5 is that we can actually adjust things with a lot more detail because we have a cue control. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we can spread our fingers or we can pinch in and we can actually get, well, that's too much control. We can actually get control over how narrow or how wide that is. So here is that similar sort of EQ cut we were doing before, but instead of having to just be content with it being something like that and cutting off the frequencies either side, we can come in here and we can stretch it out with our fingers and we can actually get a really narrow cue, which means we can do what we call notch filtering, which means if there's just a frequency that's misbehaving, we can actually notch it out by just using something like this. So let's just uh, play this one now. And there you can hear we can boost it up just you can just hear that one frequency and then we can pull down to pull out just that one small band of frequencies so it gives you much more control it's also a five band eq as opposed to three and you also have different shapes here so we get a much better high shelf and low shelf and high pass and low pass filters because we can actually control those and control those q sizes and the other options here much more effectively so once again check out the video that'll be at the end here and in the description if you want to learn more about this but that's a great way to get even more control over your EQ here in GarageBand. There you go. I hope this helped you understand how we use EQ and gave you some tips and tricks and ideas that are going to help you in your next project. If you'd like to learn more, there's two more videos linked right down below. You can subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon and I hope to see you on the next video.